positive views of Saul's character weren't entirely extinguished by the biblical writer. David's own lament when he hears of Saul's death by suicide and Jonathan's death also may reflect Saul's tremendous popularity. David orders the Judahites to sing what's called the Song of the Bow in praise of Saul. Your glory, O Israel, lies slain on your heights. How have the mighty fallen, Saul and Jonathan, beloved and cherished, never parted in life or in death. They were swifter than eagles, they were stronger than lions. Daughters of Israel, weep over Saul, who clothed you in crimson and finery, who decked your robes with jewels of gold. How have the mighty fallen in the thick of battle, Jonathan, slain on your heights. I grieve for you, my brother Jonathan, you were most dear to me. Your love was wonderful to me more than the love of women. How have the mighty fallen, the weapons of war perished. Of course, representing David as bewailing Saul and Jonathan in these terms would have served an apologetic function as well. Um, David is cleared of any part in or even desire for the death of Saul. So halfway through the book of Samuel then is the first part of, of the story of David and his encounters with Saul, running through to the end of 1 Samuel and the first few chapters of 2 Samuel, about 2 Samuel 5. And this whole section, this first part of the story of David, has the feel of a historical novel or narrative. It's, it, there's lots of direct speech and lots of dialogue, so it has the feel of a fiction, of a novel. Given that the ruling family in Judah was referred to as the House of David for several centuries, and given a wonderful archaeological find dating from the 9th century, it's a Syrian inscription that refers to the House of David, dating to the 9th century. So given some of those, those, those two pieces of evidence, I think most scholars would see David as a real person. None of the details of the biblical account can really be confirmed, of course, but I think the consensus is that David was a real person. There are obviously some who do not hold that and believe this is a much later retrojection. But David is, surprisingly enough, presented as very human. He's not a divine character, and he's certainly not even a highly virtuous character. The first installment of his story through about 2 Samuel 5 is clearly sympathetic to David and favorable to David, but it's not entirely obsequious or flattering, which is the sort of genre that we very often have coming out of ancient Near Eastern texts dealing with royalty. This part of the story may be an apology for David, but it's also subtly critical of him. Certainly David is a hero, but if you read between the lines, he's also an opportunist, he's an outlaw, he serves as a mercenary for the Philistines for some of the time, and he can act pretty unscrupulously. So this isn't royal propaganda in the simple sense, even though to some degree it may be an apology for David. As we're going to see in a minute, David will fare much, much worse in the second installment of his story, and this is the story that takes up the bulk of 2 Samuel.